Not too long ago, I was watching a broadcast on Twitch TV of Super Mafia All-Stars, and one of the players made a comment that they felt that their behavior and the, the behavior of other players was not different from random. And I began to think to myself that that was something you could actually model and calculate. So I set out to determine uh, what would be the odds of town winning if, in fact, uh, the player's behavior was random. And I uh, ended up discovering much more about the game of Mafia, and I will present that here. First of all, it's probably a good idea to describe uh, what the game of Mafia is. In this case, we're talking about uh, a format used by Super Mafia All-Stars, which is broadcast on Twitch TV on Tuesday nights. And they use uh, a, a format where they have 15 players uh, in, the, in the game, of which three are cast in the role of Mafia. And these three Mafia members know who each other are, and they have the ability in the night to kill two town members as long as there's three of them remaining, and one town member after that, and that's important as you uh, go through the game and consider these different models. The rest of the members of the game are cast or uh, put in the role of town, and three of these town members have additional power, that is their power roles, and they include the vigilante, who has the ability to kill one time in the night at some point during the game, as long as they're still alive. The medic, which has the ability to save somebody, uh, they can designate a person to be saved each night that they're alive, and if that person is either shot at by the vigilante or attempted to be killed by mafia during the night, the medic save saves them. Um, and finally, the cop, who has the ability to gather information about the uh, relative alignment of individuals turn by turn. In this case, being a parody cop, all they get is information that says that they are the same or different than the last person they checked. And so this is the basic game. There are other videos to uh, give you more information about this game, but this is the, the format that we're going to evaluate in this particular presentation. The next thing we want to do is create a flow chart that essentially plays out the game in all its variations. And this game starts off with, just like you saw in the previous slides, 12 town members and 3 mafia. Uh, although we don't see this configuration at the beginning of the game because we start in the night phase, and Mafia having three members are allowed to kill two town. Um, and given the fact that that's not always true with the power rolls, what we want to do is start in a baseline circumstance where we are just examining uh, the game without any power rolls at the moment. So we just have three Mafia uh, and 12 Vanilla Town. And sure enough, we wake up uh, on the morning of the first day and there are only 10 town left because Mafia has made their two kills. And so we have 10 and 3 at this point. During the first day, after discussions occur, one of two things happens. Actually, there's a third thing. You could go to sleep, but uh, one of two things happens. We'll talk about sleep later on in the presentation. You could correctly lynch a member of Mafia, uh, then creating a 10 and 2 circumstance, 10 town and 2 Mafia. Or we can accidentally mislynch a member of town and creating 9 and 3. And after that night, with no power rolls interfering, we end up with either 9 town and 2 mafia or 7 town and 3 mafia. And we can uh, continue to go down this path. The next day, you can either have a correct lynch or a miss lynch. And you can see as we branch down further, you end up with either 8 town and 1 mafia, 7 town and 2 mafia, if the first day's lynch was correct, and 6 and 2, 4 and 3, if the first day's lynch was incorrect, and so on. We can simplify this a little further and actually just create these little fractions here. 10 and 3 meaning 10 town, 3 mafia. And we can continue to play this out. And you notice by the third day, uh, if in fact we had three consecutive correct lynches, town wins the game. Likewise, if we had had three consecutive miss lynches, mafia would win the game. And you can see we've marked town wins in green and mafia wins in red. And we can continue down this path until, in fact, every single possible outcome it terminates into a town win or a mafia win. So this is our flowchart for mafia without any power rolls, no sleeping, 
uh, no double stacking. This is just your basic uh, flowchart here. From this, we can actually start to calculate the odds of landing into any one of these terminal points. Okay. The, the first one you can calculate, just to give you an example, you can see the chance of getting in this first uh, cell here where town wins. You got a 3 of 13 chance on the first day of lynching the correct, uh, correct, correct lynch, getting a mafia member. 2 out of 11 the second day and 1 out of 9 the third day. And since each one of these has to happen, the first and the second and the third day have to have correct lynches, that AND function is the same as multiplying, and so we can just essentially multiply those three fractions, 3 times 2 times 1 over 13 times 11 times 9, and that gives us the chance of three consecutive correct lynches getting us a town victory on day 3, at the end of day 3. So 6 out of 1,287. Likewise, we could actually calculate the other side as well. You can see the chance of mislynching somebody would be uh, 10 out of 13 times 7 out of 10 times 4 out of 7, which gives you a fraction of 280 over 910. A lot of numbers here. And in fact, you could chase this thing down and get uh, fractions of every single terminus in this flow chart. And the, all those fractions add up to 1, which is a nice thing. All of the fractions in the green area would total the probability of town winning this game. And all of the, if you total up all of the red cells, it would give you the probability of Mafia winning. And what we learn from this is that if, in fact, all of those behaviors were random, were just acting without any real knowledge of whether a person is town or Mafia, that is, um, every single time we make a read on an individual, it's like flipping a coin, 50-50. Town has a chance of winning about 15% of the time, 15.7% win, which is quite low. Uh, and I think what we find in Super Mafia All-Stars is that uh, town actually wins considerably more than that, uh, closer to 50% of the time. Now, well, that would suggest that there are other things that are at play and that, in fact, uh, the behaviors are much better than random. Uh, in terms of detecting Mafia members and correctly lynching them and making the game far more balanced. One of the things we can do is we can recalculate this entire model and consider a circumstance where we have twice as good a chance of detecting a Mafia member as we did before. So a 2 to 1 or you can think of it as a 67-33 circumstance. So instead of 50-50, 67-33 because 67 is twice as big as 33, so to speak. And we can remodel this. And the easy way to do that is just to take the right number in each one of these fractions and just double it. So instead of 10 and 3 at the top, we have 10 and 6. 9 and 2 becomes 9 and 4 and so on. And we recalculate all of the cells at the bottom. And we end up with a new calculation, new areas. We add them all up. And we find out that town under this circumstance would win 41.3% of the time. Well, that's still not quite a balanced game. And in fact, it seems that our ability to detect Mafia is better than 2 to 1. So we can model now a circumstance where it's 3 to 1. Again, we can take our fractions, and now we multiply uh, the Mafia number by 3 and recalculate all the fractions at the bottom. And we learn that if, in fact, the ability of town were three to one in detecting mafia, they would win 60% of the time. Uh, okay, that's a little bit better than a balanced game. And so we're guessing that their ability to detect uh, mafia is somewhere in between those two. But just to play this out a little further, just to give you a little bit more data, we can actually calculate a four to one circumstance. And that four to one circumstance, again, would be like multiplying the mafia number by four, recalculating all the areas, and we end up with it being 72.2% of the time. So if, in fact, uh, town were, were capable in a 4 to 1 ratio of detecting Mafia members, they would win 72.2% of the time. Now we can see that the actual number is probably somewhere between a 2 to 1 and 3 to 1. And so we're going to select 70-30. Uh, 
Um, I think the actual number is somewhere between 71, about 71.29 to give you a 50-50 town mafia split. But let's go ahead and calculate this. This gets really ugly because now we're multiplying the town number by 3, the mafia number by 7, and you get these outrageous fractions. So we're just going to reduce the model to numbers that are easier to deal with, calculate the areas, and what we end up with now is about 48.4% of the time. So this 70-30 uh, detection ratio is, uh, gives us a fairly balanced game where town wins 48.4% of the time. To give you an idea of what this might mean, uh, imagine flipping a coin 100 times. If you're just guessing heads and tails, over the long run, you'll be right about 50% of the time. What we're saying is, is that your ability to detect Mafia or the Super Mafia All-Stars ability to detect Mafia means that they would guess about 70% of the coin flips, not 50%. So they're better than 50-50. They'd guess 70 right on average as opposed to 50. So uh, a, a little foreknowledge in there or an unbalanced coin or something causes that. So now we have an idea of the baseline of our game. And let's move on to some other things that we can model and determine.